Hi, second grade friends. Today is our last story for Knowledge 6. We are on Lesson 9 called The Water Cycle. Before I begin our story, I'm going to introduce you to our vocabulary words. Our first vocabulary word for today's story is the word condensation. Repeat after me. Condensation. Condensation is the process by which a gas changes into a liquid. Our next vocabulary word is the word evaporation. Say evaporation. Evaporation is the process by which a liquid changes into a gas. Our last vocabulary word is the word precipitation. Say precipitation. Precipitation is water that falls from the sky as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Every day all around you, an extraordinary natural cycle is happening. It is called the water cycle. Most of the water that has ever existed on our planet is still here and is being moved from one place to another. It moves from the oceans and land to the sky above us, and it moves from one part of the world to another. It has done this for millions and millions of years. The rain that falls on you has been recycled many, many times over many millions of years. Water is the main source of life. More than two-thirds of Earth's surface is covered with water. That's a good thing, because all living things need it to survive. Approximately 97% of the water on Earth is in the oceans. The rest is in lakes, rivers, streams, ponds, beneath the ground, or in its frozen state in the form of glaciers and polar ice. There is also water that you cannot see in the air around you, called water vapor. Therefore, water not only moves from place to place, but it can exist in three states of matter. It can be a liquid, a solid, and a gas. Oceans and rivers contain water in liquid form. Glaciers and ice you put in drinks contain water in frozen solid form, and the air contains water as a gas called water vapor. The water cycle has three main phases, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Water changes its form based on the temperature and whether it is being heated or cooled. In the winter when it is cold, many people experience days in which snow falls from the sky. The snow covers the land and icicles hang down from the roofs of houses. And then, as spring arrives and the weather becomes warmer, the snow and ice melt into puddles. The puddles slowly disappear as the warm sunshine causes the water to evaporate. Through the process of evaporation, the warmth of the sun changes liquid water into a gas known as water vapor. Water vapor is carried up into the air. The hotter it is, the more quickly evaporation happens. Now, let's follow that water vapor as it rises up higher and higher into the sky. As it rises up, it is blown about by the wind, and it moves through the air or atmosphere. In other words, water vapor may be carried by the wind far away from the place where it was once a puddle. Water vapor in the air far below the clouds is called humidity. When there is a lot of water in the air, we say it's humid. A different, at different times of the year, there are different amounts of water in the air. Warm air can hold more water vapor than cold air. That is why on a hot summer's day, if there's a lot of moisture in the air, you will often hear people talk about the humidity. Water vapor high in the atmosphere or way up in the sky forms clouds as it becomes water droplets. The wind carries the water vapor higher and higher into the atmosphere where the temperatures are much cooler. As the vapor cools, it changes back from a gas into water droplets, which form clouds. When water changes from a gas to a liquid, this process is called condensation. Because cold air cannot hold as much water vapor as hot air, condensation happens high up in the sky or atmosphere, where it is very cold. Condensation causes clouds to form. In other words, water vapor becomes water droplets. As the tiny water droplets are blown about by the wind, they crash into each other. They join together to form larger water droplets. As this bumping and crashing of water droplets continues, clouds are formed. Eventually, when water droplets and clouds become too large and too heavy, they fall back down to the ground. Depending on the temperature high up in the atmosphere, the water droplets either fall as rain, sleet, snow, or hail. When water droplets fall to the ground, regardless of what they look like, this is called precipitation. So down comes the rain or snow or hail or sleet. It waters the earth and falls into the oceans, lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds. Some of the precipitation seeps into the ground too. This groundwater nourishes plants. It also provides a source of fresh drinking water. Many people have wells that access the underground water supply. 
Once precipitation occurs, this process starts all over again. Water on Earth evaporates and rises up in the atmosphere as water vapor, and as it cools or condenses, clouds form once again. Clouds are much more than fun shapes in the sky. Without clouds, there would be no precipitation, such as snow, sleet, hail, or rain. Without precipitation, nothing could live or grow on Earth. Clouds also provide a kind of shelter or protection from the sun. Without clouds, it would be very, very hot during the day and extremely cold at night. This would make it difficult for living things to survive. Clouds help control the temperature on our planet. Scientists groups, group clouds according to their shape and height in the sky. Cirrus clouds form at very high altitudes in the atmosphere. They are wispy, almost feather-like in appearance, and are usually a sign of good weather. These clouds can be up to four miles above the ground. The temperature is very cold and high up in the atmosphere, and so cirrus clouds are made largely of ice crystals. Cumulus clouds gather in the sky on nice sunny days. Cumulus clouds appear lower down in the sky, although they are still about two miles above the ground. Cumulus clouds are round and fluffy looking. Some people think they look like cotton. They are a sign that the weather is going to get colder. However, when cumulus clouds get larger and darker, this can mean that there will be a thunderstorm. The appearance of stratus clouds means that you will probably need an umbrella because it's going to rain. They're usually gray and they can cover the whole sky and block the sun. Stratus clouds form lower down in the atmosphere than cirrus or cumulus clouds. The temperature affects whether the clouds contain ice crystals or water droplets. The clouds that are high up in the colder reaches of Earth's atmosphere are made up of sparkling ice crystals. The clouds that are lower down where it is warmer are made up of tiny water droplets. The next time you look up at the clouds, see if you can figure out what kind of clouds they are, and then think about the amazing water cycle.